we'll start with Frenchie Davis, one of the great stories from my other job here on NBC on The Voice. Aside from having great musical performances, some of the stories of the contestants on The Voice have been equally as compelling. I don't think any more so than Frenchie Davis, who had another life on another show. And she and I went over to BLT to talk about that and much more. Here's my time with Frenchie. I love spending time with you. We've had Thank some you. passing moments on the set of The Voice, but you know, this is my show now, so yes. you're on my turf. I love Th it. This is home. I love it. And this is a place where you and I can kind of, you know, get into it. I kissed a girl, I liked it. Tell me quickly a little bit about why you mm -hmm. like the show, The Voice. I really love this show because I think it's, in my opinion, I think it's the first singing competition on TV that's actually been about singing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really special that, you know, even the producers, even the casting of the show, you know, they really s tried to seek out, you know, really talented singers. There were no bad singers cast on purpose so mm -hmm. that we could sit at home and watch them on TV and laugh at them. It's a serious competition. When I took the job for The Voice, I'd never seen Idol. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the only person that never seen Idol. I really haven't. Mm -hmm. Take me back to season two, Idol, and tell me what happened. Well, basically, I was disqualified from Idol. For, How far had you gotten? Um, I auditioned, and then I made it to Hollywood Week. And what did Idol uncover? They didn't uncover anything. They just came out with some information that I had been upfront with them about from day one, and decided. Which were photos on a website? Mm-hmm. When I was that, they weren't weren't even on the, the website. And they weren't bad at all. <laughs> Naked. But we're not even Carson. What? You, I'm trying to figure out what it was. You host The Voice. Why are but we talking about Idol? Because I just—it's an interesting <laughs> part of your story. This is about your it story. It is an interesting part of my story, but I think it's just time to move on so we can create the new, the next part of my story. Do you feel like you are making yourself vulnerable again to a new set of circumstances that could happen even at The Voice? You know, it's so funny that you ask that because. There was a time when I would have thought that doing something like this would be making me vulnerable again. But thanks to the National Enquirer, you know, a few months ago when I saw myself on the cover for being fat, it's like I immediately had an epiphany as soon as I saw it. It was like, oh, being afraid of putting myself out there isn't protecting me from the scrutiny. They're going to come for me anyway. They're going to judge me anyway. So I might as well go balls to the wall and go for everything I've ever dreamed of getting out of life. A few months after that, I was singing at a gay club in West Hollywood because the gay boys keep a girl working and they have <laughs> been a huge support system for me. And I was performing at a gay club in West Hollywood and there was a woman in the audience who was like, oh my God, I think you're fantastic and I'm going to be working in casting for this new show on NBC called The Voice. You should think about auditioning for it. What well, can you tell me about Tara Lynn Ramsey, your first selection in the battle round? Tara Lynn's an amazing singer. But Frenchie, when you guys were rehearsing with Christina on the stage and there was so much sort of tension there, and you got Christina in the middle of it, and she loves it because she loves the competition, she loves how she loved go, it. she loved it. But then Christina's like, come on girls, it's all the single ladies and it's uh, 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 and I want to see you smile and work the stage. And that really is for people at home. That's what makes you not just a singer, but an artist. Yeah. You know, when you don't feel good. And these guys are on tour. Yeah. I don't care if it's a rapper, if it's a singer, if it's a band. You're on stage, you know. You're going to have bad days, you're going to have beefs with people, and you have to check it at the door and you get do. out there and perform for people who pay with their hard-earned money to see your ass. Exactly. And, and so you had to do that in the and battle And I round. went out there and I gave them my all, wearing Alexander McQueen hoop earrings and a glossy lip. When I had both of you in Tara Lynn's hands and I rose your hand and said, and, and Christina picked you to move on to the live shows, what was going on in your head? And, and bring a bigger picture for me. It was a big moment for your life. First of all, Tara Lynn's an amazing singer. So it's not like they put me up against right. some girl who couldn't hang yeah, yeah, with yeah. me vocally. Like, <laughs> that wasn't it at all. Your stuff was tested early. Yeah, exactly. Because I felt, I, I mean, throughout the process, I always felt that Christina kind of favored Tara Lynn over me. Mm -hmm. And so to have her at the end, you know, choose me, it meant a lot. Because it meant that, you know, underneath the harsh criticism, she believes in my talent. 
You're sort of the poster child for second chance. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, what do you think so well, great about people having a second chance? I think second chances are amazing. You know, I think you can have as many chances as you like as long as you never give up on what you, you know, what your dreams are, as long as you never give up on what you believe in. My focus is just always trying to improve, always be better, always be growing. I still go to voice lessons, you know, because I want to always be a better singer, always be a better performer. You do warm ups? I still do. I what is it? Can you get it doing? What is it? What is it? Um, like me, 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 me. Well, don't lift your neck Baby. up like that. That's no? terrible for your really? vocal cords, Carson. Is, yes. is that bad? Yes, it's bad. You have uh, to, you know, like I do my good baritone. posture. Uh. Good posture, you know, and you breathe in from the nose, fill your diaphragm, fill up, yes. and you let that be the source of your power, not this. Not here, oh, really? Yeah, that's how you protect those uh, vocal cords. You know, and then like, one of the warm ups that I like to do is, because if it can go up there, I got it. <laughs> the notes are there, baby, if I can do that. <laughs> What kind of recording career would you like to have? An epic one. You want to write? I would love to write and I would love to do dance and pop and you know, let's let's get a plus size pop star out there. Let's do it. Let's make mm -hmm. it happen. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that everything happens for a reason and looking back in retrospect, Idol wasn't for me. The voice, this is for me. Win or lose, this was for me. I was supposed to do this. Frenchie, thanks so much for your time. Carson, I'm sure you're adorable. You thank you for hug. having of me. Of course, thank you. Mm. Good luck. Thank you so much. Right, yeah. Frenchie Davis, everybody.